So this is a volume that is nine case studies of really cool campus and community partnerships. This book teaches us lessons about both the promises and the perils of digital technology. And so we were sort of seeking partnerships that were genuinely co-creative, that were equitable, and where the community partners had equal voice in the direction of the project. And all of them also incorporate digital tools and leverage digital technology to help tell community stories. So there's nine case studies in here and they are all spectacular. So they, it, the tools vary depending on the project. So some of them are digital archives. Uh, some of them are projects that retell a story, but through the lens of the community that experienced it instead of sort of through the academic lens. Some of them actually create new tools to analyze uh, these, these virtual diaries. And some of them are these hybrid projects that actually have a digital component and then also a physical component that sort of travels around. And so the, the projects all use technology in really different ways and sort of in response to community need. The inspiration for this volume was a community partnership that I had with a community in St. Paul, Minnesota called Rondo. This is a historically black community that was bifurcated by highway construction in the 1950s and 60s. The trauma of that loss lies really close to the surface. The community organization was working at the time to sort of amplify their story to fulfill the needs of these other projects that they have going on. And so when I arrived and I set up a partnership, it was to do something called a history harvest. So it's where it's kind of like Antiques Roadshow, where a bunch of people bring in objects of significance to them. You know, somebody's uh, dad got a watch from the Great Northern Railroad when he worked for the company in the 1920s. Uh, somebody else brought in their yo-yo championship hat and their very first paycheck and told us this horrendous story about um, paycheck poker, which is a game they would play with their paychecks when they got them. And so people brought in all of these, these, these moments in their past. And so when you put them in an archive together, it creates this collective narrative. And none of those things exist in museums because our collecting practices have been uh, inherently racist and sexist over time. Then I was presenting about this project at a conference and I had this throwaway line that was just like, and then we taught our students the best practices of community engagement by example. And I threw out some examples, but then the commenter at the end of the panel gets up and he's like, best practices of community engagement? Oh, what are those and where can I find them? So I start scrambling and I start looking around trying to find the best practices or model practices for community engagement. And there are none that deal with digital projects specifically. And so I kept digging and then I realized there was next to nothing and I would have to do it myself. So I assembled a team. We got some amazing contributors and my co-editors are also fabulous. So that's how the book got started. For this book in particular, we wanted to reduce the barrier between the community groups that we purport to serve and access to the scholarship about them. And the only way to do that would be to make it free. And so that's why we really uh, had in our, in our minds that we needed to do an open access edition. We were seeking out uh, open access presses. I get contacted by UC Press. They're like, hey, we heard about this thing that you're doing and we've got open access and we think your book would be a really good fit. And so um, I started investigating and then it turns out I got a job here. And so it just, it really worked out and we got a, we got a grant and uh, the press was wonderful. They had a, an amazing editor and look at this beautiful cover art. So cool. Uh, and, and they did a great job with the print version, but then also the digital version. And we got to make a lot of choices about how things appeared. And it was, it was really a productive experience.